Ha! Welcome back to Manchester United Talk with me, myself, Agostino Zinga. Yesterday, 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 oh no, better yet, yesterday, 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 United won 1-0 against Leicester. 1-0 to the mighty Manchester United. A pretty hard-fought win for the most part. I think most fans can agree the first half was probably quite split. We started off maybe a little bit quicker than um, Leicester in the first 20 or so minutes. Uh, um, unluckily for Marcus Rashford, he uh, fluffed his chances at one chance and when, it, they, when he got put through, or oh, actually um, Luke Shaw clipped the ball over the top, a great ball into the area actually. He should be doing probably more of that and uh, Rashford ran onto it at the far post and somehow managed to ho- head it over the bar when it, was, it seemed much more easy to kind of head it in. Now, now, it could be said that maybe Kasper Schmeichel distracted him somewhat because Kasper Schmeichel, like his dad, is really good at spreading himself across the goal and rushing out to the players and kind of making him rush to the decision-making. But I think considering uh, the level at which Rashford is playing at and his kind of preference to play number nine, he should be probably slotting those chances in from that kind of distance. Uh and at that moment, I kind of thought, oh, flip, this is going to turn into the Burnley game, right? Where Rashford sort of missed that chance that he got the chance at the beginning and then we kind of went, quickly went two goals down and they had to rescue a point right towards the end. And um, I just thought, and then of course, Leicester have probably more weapons up front or going forward than Burnley do. So if we do concede a goal and we're chasing the game, then uh, Leicester could very well damage us on the break. Luckily, that didn't happen. And shortly after that, uh, through a mistake by uh, Mendy, I think it might have been, who's been pretty shit, hasn't he, for, for a while. And I think I've watched that study a couple of times now. And since he started, I think he gave away a couple of penalties before in another game. He fouls a lot of people. He's very, very, uh, he seems, he either seems off the pace or he just seems like he's susceptible to giving away the ball and bringing players down. Luckily for us, he kind of turned into the wrong space. He got dispossessed. The ball got nicked back to Paul Pogba. And he put a delicious ball over the top of the defence on for Rashford to control with his right foot a deft touch and then slam it home bottom corner great great goal we went into the break just uh, just ahead at 1-0 and then second half you would hope that more of the same would continue you'd hope we kind of open the floodgates and kind of really start attacking uh, Leicester but I didn't really transpire through various reasons uh, one being one glaring ring why it didn't really work out was um, we didn't really get to see the best of Sanchez I'm not really sure what's going on with him. I'm not sure if it's uh, just that we've kind of, you know, it does happen sometimes. You buy players, it just doesn't work out regardless of what you do. Uh, but just, it's so weird for United fans or for Premier League fans in general to see Sanchez playing so poorly because we're so used to him playing at such a high level. When he was at Arsenal, he was essentially their main talisman and he basically dragged that team forward, was able to kind of score very decisive goals, some 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 decisive goals against United at some, at some point. But since he's come out to United, he kind of never has really kind of replicated that form. And um, it's weird because Alan Ole is the kind of soul shark. Every player has improved. Uh, every player that was even underperforming slightly under Jose Mourinho, with the introduction of Ole Gunnar Sol Shark, they've kind of stepped their levels up. But I don't think Sol Shark has been able to kind of figure out the uh, Sanchez riddle. Um, of course, he scored a great goal against Arsenal the other week, but just his general performance has not just has not been good enough. We're not really seeing the incisive passing. We're not really seeing his incisive dribbling. We're not really seeing him really hurt teams as much as he probably should have. So that's one thing that affected us. Another thing that affected us was Ashley Young. Uh, a lot of teams in the Premier League nowadays are using right backs or I've used their full backs as options for attack. If you don't have really attack-minded wingers and you want to overload the defence on your team that you're facing or offer different angles of attack, having fullbacks that can get forward and get backwards at the same pace and have to d- deliver decisive balls and be good at dribbling is something that, you know, is going to really help you going forward. On one side of Luke Shaw, we've got a left-back who's probably a bit, a bit, a bit timid and isn't as uh, isn't as willing to take risk, but still, I appreciate the fact that we've got like a left foot and left back whose natural inclination is to kind of get up and down that left hand flank. And when Martial plays, they, they tend to support each other pretty well on that left hand side. But Ashley Young on his side, on his right hand side, does offer literally nothing going forward. Uh, if one thing is that he's a converted fullback, so he's defense wise. He's a bit susceptible for the balls over the top, balls around him. He's not the best. He doesn't have the best defensive instincts. Going forward, uh, being a converted winger, you'd think that he'd be able to deliver a ball. But more likely than not, whenever Ashley Young gets in a position to kind of get the ball in, he's always got his head down. 
He never looks at the player he's going to cross it to. He just bangs him into the area. And even the other week, we, I heard a commentator say something along the lines of like, oh, Ashley Young putting a good ball there. And I was like, no, it wasn't a good ball because no one was at the end of it. A good ball is if you're pointing to the area where there's generally people uh, from your team standing in and they kind of miss the ball. That's a good ball. But putting it into the box where no one is attacking it isn't a good ball at all. And he does that so often. It's such a... It's such an old school way of playing, right? I remember doing that at Southern League level where you just, you know, you hear the manager at the sidelines like shouting, yeah, get the ball in the area, get the ball in the area. Why? Because the whole idea was if you got it into the danger zone per se, something would come of it, right? The ball would bubble around, someone would hit it from distance or whatever it may be. But nowadays, you just can't afford to just whip balls into the box willy-nilly and give away possession. You just can't do it. There has to be a rhyme and a reason for you to put the ball in. If there isn't, start the attack again. But actually, Young just seems to be unable to kind of put a ball into the area and really get on the end of it. I, I, can't, I can't remember the last time we scored a header from a corner, right? And there's always that feeling of anticipation whenever he takes the corner and he puts his fucking hands up. You really think, oh yeah, he's definitely going to get on someone's head this time. But it never transpires. Just another aimless ball into the box that no one can really get at the end of. So Ashley Young was a big issue there. And then I guess overall, um, I guess maybe there's something missing in maybe the attack midfield area, I, f I probably would say that I probably do prefer us playing the diamond. I do probably prefer uh, Lingard playing a little bit in the middle, uh, behind the strikers, whether they be Sanchez and Martial, or Sanchez and Rashford, or maybe Rashford and Martial. I do prefer that kind of formation. I think it brings out the best in Lingard. He's able to kind of, you know, really hurt teams by running across the pitch, right? It, but it, but mainly occupying that middle point in, in the centre. And then, of course, you've got uh, the ability to have uh, Pogba on left-hand side cutting in as he probably likes to do. So I think those elements were kind of missing for us overall. I think in general, we were fatigued. Um, a lot of players were kind of pulling up with cramp and getting really tired. Worryingly, 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 whatever that word is, <laughs> when Lukaku came on, he seemed absolutely tired after about 15 or so minutes, which is really strange because he just came on the pitch. Uh, but it seems that by and large, everyone's kind of like maybe facing the toll of that kind of, you know, winning the ball back possession style play football that um, Ozgon Solskjaer is wanting us to play. But overall, I thought we handled the game pretty well. I thought the referee was pretty poor. He should have probably sent off a, maybe Matic for us and maybe Mendy for them. Uh, a few niggly tackles that probably went unchallenged uh, from that referee. But, you know, uh, the lesser the better about referees, the better. Um, and overall, I think we contained um, Leicester pretty well. We limited Vardy's chances. He didn't really get a chance to kind of, you know, uh, have a full sprint at the defence. He didn't really get a chance of running behind our defensive line. The defensive uh, partnership of Eric Bailly and Lindelof looks pretty solid if they can keep themselves fit or Bailly can keep himself fit for the most part. Um, by and large, a pretty good performance and something that's probably going to hold us in good stead. Um, it's, it's weird though, really, right? Because I'm not too sure what the Soul Shark um, conversation is, whether or not we want him to kind of stay as manager. But with every game that passes... Um, you kind of get the impression that he's, you know, really, really adapting himself really well to this challenge. The players seem to be responding really well to him. You hear so many um, reports coming up about the training room, the training ground being such a happier place now uh, since Ole Gunnar got Solskjaer has taken over. But of course, we're at a really pivotal moment for Manchester United, right? We're a real, real uh, kind of. I wouldn't say breaking point, but we're at, we're at, it's a really important appointment, the next one coming up. Because after the mistakes that we've made in the last three appointments and the weird tra directions we've kind of gone in in terms of football philosophy, in terms of player recruitment, in terms of just the club structure, we really need to get this next appointment right. We really need to get it right. And I think regardless of who the manager is, I'd say the probably most important thing is getting a football director in place. So regardless of who we appoint in the hot seat, we have a philosophy in the way we kind of there's a rhyme and reason as to why we buy the players that we buy and how we build or let go or build or or, or break down our squad. Because we've got a lot of dead wood around who've kind of signed extensions, people like Chris Smallings and the likes of that. And we've still got players who are still kind of signing extensions, like a one matter who probably should be maybe moved on. We need the football directors to come in to kind of have a, a, a long-term plan, long-term five to ten-year vision of where the squad and team should be uh, at that point. And hopefully that happens. I'd like to see Solskjaer get the job personally myself. Uh, but if he doesn't, then of course Pochettino maybe is a, is a probably the best option to go with next because I'm sure if he doesn't, if Tottenham are unable to lock him down, I can easily see Pochettino move to somewhere like Madrid or something, which maybe might be the best thing for him, especially since Madrid are kind of transitioning into this more of a, the lesser Galactico influence than more kind of like going towards like the younger generation of players. So maybe be able to mold those players into his mold uh, at the same time too. But overall, a great one of victory for United and we go onwards and upwards from there. Thanks so much for tuning in.
Take care.